In this video, we'll complete the free fall problems in our review guide. A ball is sitting on top of a roof. It is pushed by a student who tries to catch it before it touches the ground. The roof is 3.4 meters tall. So the idea is there's this building and our ball is stuck on top of that building. That building is 3.4 meters tall. And so we've used some object to push that off of the building. Okay. So we'll use some object to push that off. And we want to catch it just before it hits the ground. So we're going to see how much time do we have. So T is our unknown. Okay. And so we need a equation for free fall. So if it's accelerating, we could use any of these. But because it's in free fall and we know the initial velocity is always zero, we can rewrite those expressions using these terms here. And so here we have them chosen without those uh, expressions, okay? So we'll start with one of those and we'll say we have two expressions that have time. We have one that has the final velocity in it, which we do not have in this problem. We have one that has height and we do. This is a very common expression, y equals one half g t squared. So we'll go ahead and plug in our 3.4 meters high one half the acceleration of gravity negative 9.81 and t squared so we should see a little bit of a problem with this negative here and there's nothing to cancel it out that's because remember if we're falling our y is negative 3.4 meters so that becomes a negative 3.4 so now we'll go we'll divide by Multiply this expression times 2 to get rid of that 1 half. Divide by negative 9.81. And so t squared equals this expression here. And so that negative goes away. So we'll go 2 times 3.4 equals divided by 9.81 equals. And we get... Uh, zero, excuse me, we get this 0.693. So this is the combination of all this math. Don't forget we need to take the square root of that. And so the time it takes equals 0.832. And if we want to put that to two significant figures, because so that's what our problem has here, we go 0.83 seconds. So the student has less than a second to react and catch the ball before it hits the ground. Number 10. In number 10, we want to solve for uh, the time it takes for a ball to fall off a bell tower. Excuse me. In number 10, we're given the time it takes to fall from a bell tower, and we're trying to find out how tall it is. So it's the opposite problem, which is a bit easier because it's already set up with the equation asking us why? So the time it takes to fall is 2.50 seconds. We know gravity is negative 9.81 meters per second. And we want to find y equals question mark. So y equals 1 half g t squared. Again, we have an object that's accelerating, so we want to choose from our acceleration equations. But this is a special acceleration only due to gravity where the initial velocity is equal to zero. So that allows us to jump to this expression here. So y equals 1 half negative 9.81 times the time squared, which is 2.50. And we will find our y. Now, you'll notice this is a negative, so our y is going to be negative. Okay? So we'll just solve this expression out here. We'll say uh, 0 0.5 times 9.81 negative times 2.5 times 2.5 equals and we get a negative 30.65 now we have three significant figures given in our time so we'll want to use three significant figures and so that's going to be 30.7 meters is this negative correct well technically we have a small error here because this is how far it fell Right? We want to know how tall. 
So building is just take the negative off. 30.7 meters tall. Yeah, it's a little bit annoying there, but that's what the difference between the positive and the negative is. All right, number 11. A cell phone is rated to survive if it lands somewhere around a velocity less than 30 miles per hour. And these are numbers that I just made up for this problem, so it's not a true value. If a phone is dropped from a distance of 1.2 meters, will it survive that fall? Assuming there should be no air resistance in this problem. And we're going to use a gravity of 21.8 miles per hour per second. So again, we want to know, now we're looking for VF. So in our first example, we were looking for time. Our second example, we were looking for Y. And now we're looking for VF. Again, there's two expressions for VF. Two expressions for VF. And we need to know, are we giving time of flight or are we given height? And in this expression, we're given height. So we'll use the second expression here. VF squared equals um, twice gravity times how far it falls. So the final velocity object is going to equal the square root of 2 times gravity. Now we're going to use this for gravity, miles per hour, 21.8 miles per hour per second. And so then we need to multiply that times our height. Well, our height is in miles and our given height is in meters, so we need to convert that. So we just come over here to the side, we go 1.20 meters, we multiply that by a ratio. We want to cancel meters, so we put that on bottom, and we're looking for miles. Now it turns out that 1,609 meters is one mile. So we'll check that expression again. Yeah, I thought I, I mistyped something there. So we have three zeros there. Zero, 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 seven, four. It should have been a much smaller. So three zeros in front. There's our decimal. So this is the distance we use in our formula. Times point zero 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 seven four five eight. So we're going to take that answer, multiply it times the 21.8, multiply it times the 2, and then don't forget to take the square root. So if I stop for a minute and make that note, square root of 0 0.0325 VF equals 0, excuse me, yes, 0 0.18 miles per hour. So the phone is going to be going very slow compared to the distance it can travel. So will it survive? Yes, it will survive. Okay?